What's up YouTube? Welcome to Sir Hunt's Reviews. I'm Mark and this is going to be our Game of Thrones Season 6 Countdown, Episode 6. So our first topic of discussion is going to be weirwood trees. Now, I have a lot of, um, like, comments, not on, there's a lot of question about what's going on where we see the White Walkers breaking into Blood Raven's cave. Now, mind you, I have talked about this in probably like four videos now, so I'm not going to go ahead and repeat all the shit that I've already said. I'm just going to tell you some new information that I've found. Um, you guys probably already know this, but like I've said before, I started watching the shows, and I am in the process of reading slash listening to the books on tape. So I do go back in touch a lot. But yeah, so the main thing that most people are getting confused about, they're like, how the fuck did they get past the spell on the cave must be gone or some shit? Well, it's actually the roots that are what's warding away evil, if you want to say the whites. They're definitely evil. I don't know why I threw up the quotations. But basically, the weirwood roots in the weirwood tree in the vicinity and also Blood Raven's throne is like made out of straight weirwood. That's what's warding off the evil in, in, in the in, in the cave. So it's not like a spell. It's It's the roots. Um, a little bit of evidence of this is in the books when Bran's at Night Fort, he passes through, uh, kind of like a weirwood door in Link. Um, one of the children of the forest in the books tells him, yo, that, uh, whatever the fuck you want to call it is weirwood door warded. It's got magical protection on it. So I think when you take all of just not necessarily just that, but other shit into account, the weirwood is what holds the magic. I also found out that at the wall, um, the children of the forest, now mind you, when the wall was first built, it wasn't as tall as it is now. Um, later on throughout the centuries, the Night's Watchmen have added ice to it. But when it was originally constructed at the base, constructed at the base of it, there are weirwood trees supposedly inside of the wall. So that's the magic at the wall that's keeping out the whites. So in summary, the way that the Whites and the White Walkers and the others get into Blood Raven's cave that we've seen from the Season 6 March Madness trailer is that they probably just burn the tree. Like, burn all the weirwood roots surrounding the outside of the entrance and maybe other places, and that would definitely negate the magical effects provided by the weirwood tree. Hmm, food for thought. Another little thing I came upon across my Reddit um, threading, if you want to call it, whatever, uh, <laughs> basically I found out that at the Tragedy of Summer Hall, there are several different explanations of what happened, but long story short, Sir Duncan the Tall and Aegon the Unlikely, uh, he, Aegon, since he's a true dragon, he's trying to hatch a dragon egg, and they all die, Sir Duncan the Tall might not have actually died, but, um, Aegon and his wife and child did, but, the dragon egg that he had was never recovered. Um, the description of that dragon egg sounds exactly like the description of Viserion uh, when Danny's handed the fossilized eggs, you know, before they hatch or whatever. The description of the egg from Summerhall that had mysteriously vanished just matches that exact same description. So what if Viserion was supposed to be Aegon the Unlikely's dragon? I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. There's not much backing that uh, tinfoil theory, if you want to call it. I'm, I'm going to change that, because I hate how everybody's always saying tinfoil. I'm going to make some original shit. I'm going to hereby dub it on this channel. We'll call it crockpot theories. All right, but yeah, so that is a little bit of a crockpot theory, and not very much evidence to back it up, but I think it would be very, very nice of a twist, and also be a way to relate... Well, you know what? It's not even going to happen on the show. Why the fuck am I talking about it like they're going to bring that shit up? They have too much on their plate. Bring back Jon Snow. Relate how we're going to be seeing Gendry again this season. Y'all have a lot of loose ends. Tie them up before you take on something else. Another thing that I wanted to talk about was there has been for like, I don't know, maybe the past year, there's been a lot of talk about, by the way, shout out to Ivan Gonzalez. Um, there have been a lot of talks about uh, <clears throat> spinoff series and it's in the works kind of, if you will. Uh, not necessarily. Whoa, what the fuck just happened? Sorry about that. Got it under control now, though. But yeah, um, so I feel like the best bet for them to do money-wise and a little bit of like less explanation would be Night of the Seven Kingdoms. I'll go into detail why uh, of how that would be an awesome spinoff. But main reason why you want to stay away from Aegon's Aegon the Conqueror's conquest because there are like 
a lot of fucking dragons. Not necessarily in that storyline, but you can't just start off with Aegon and them living on Dragonstone. No, you're going to have to give a little bit of a back backstory to to Old Valyria, and there's thousands of fucking dragons there. Like, I know that they moved there ten years before the Doom of Valyria, but they're not just going to be able to pick up with them living on Dragonstone. Like, no, we're going to have to have some backstory on a lot of Targaryens or a lot of, sorry, a lot of Valyrians, and there are dragon lords all over Valyria, so that kind of gets rid of Aegon's conquest. I would love to see it, but I just don't think it's very likely. Too many dragons. Um, next, you have the Blackfire Rebellions. Once again, too many dragons, a lot of fight scenes. I could totally see them doing that and them, like, flashbacks to that, you know, if they do do some kind of, like, spinoff series or some shit, like, I don't know. Um, but then you also have Robert's Rebellion. The main problem with that, and that's what 90% of these people want to see, and that's what we all want to see. We all honestly want to see all that shit. They should just do it all. Like Game of Thrones for the next 100 years. But yeah, so the problem with Robert's Rebellion is that it's only 20 years before Game of Thrones starts. Game of Thrones, the TV show, has been on air since 2011. So those actors that played Robert Baratheon and Ned Stark and all the other people from Robert's Rebellion technically should still play them because it just wouldn't make sense to get a totally new actor because you i don't know you know what i mean that's it's just it would be too much for them to go out and find that but you know what i'm not gonna say anything's too much because i'll just be happy with what we get catching you guys up on a couple of the interviews that have happened um Amelia clark was interviewed by glamour magazine where she was quoted as saying uh when you take game of thrones at face value it seems like a guy show because all you get really is blood tits dragons and swear words a little bit of magic mixed in there she forgot to say that but uh when, when you get down to it she said women are interested in seeing the struggle for power izzy williams was basically quoted quoted um in an interview with ew as saying that she's excited for season six she's like usually she'll get the script and she'll open it up and she'll be really excited she said this season she got the script she opened it up and she's like holy shit people are not gonna know what the fuck to expect she said that she also thinks that it's awesome that the showrunners aren't taking the fans criticism uh too much uh to heart because they know that the fans secretly love this shit. Do you secretly love this shit? You guys tell me down in the comment section. Liam Cunningham doing his usual hype man job is basically saying that when he got the script, he ripped the shit open, he got 10 scripts, you know, and he's like, holy shit, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? Holy shit, what is gonna happen? So he was like, you know, hyping it the fuck up and basically saying like, um, this season is gonna bring the carnage. Last thing I wanted to talk about was something that I touched on in my Brotherhood Without Manners episode one on video i'll put the link to that down in the description make sure you guys go check that out but uh basically i asked ricey and Braze. i said hey guys who do you think is the most important character you know they said Daenerys and pretty much danny you know what i'm saying well i just want to touch a little bit more okay so basically i found this article where to summarize what i said in the video was that it's a program or an algorithm if you will that the united states government uses to predict future terrorist attacks um i don't want to comment on whether it was successful or not but it is a super sophisticated computer program so they translated it to game of thrones and if you go by this program it is saying that Tyrion lannister is the most important character not only because he is a lot of people's favorite but it mainly went by how many pov chapters he has he has the most which is 36 um, in all five books, Tyrion has 36 uh, POV chapters, um, and that he is not only connected very well, much so, in Westeros, but also now in Essos, because he has crossed the sea. Um, but yeah, he's, his house, he's House Lannister in Westeros, which, you know, he's got all the connections there. He's traveled a great deal. Um, he's got connections at the wall too with Jon Snow. A lot of people forget about that when they're thinking about Tyrion's connections. But the reason why they were saying Daenerys is because she's obviously the most important character in my eyes she is but when you talk about who's connected the most the reason why danny was kind of taken off the table is because she's never stepped foot in westeros so she eliminates herself from the running by not ever being in westeros alone you know what i mean her she does have a lot of connections but they're in essos she doesn't necessarily have she has connections to westeros but she just doesn't have a huge storyline over there so that kind of took her out the running and then right after Tyrion is a lot of fucking people's pity party sansa um wasn't even raped in the books just on the show god um, i will be doing a sansa prediction video for season six 
Uh, just to keep it real with you guys, because I don't see her sitting on the fucking throne. If the bitch does not deserve it. It ain't gonna happen. And if it does, okay, she can be queen of the north. I don't really give a fuck. John is an honorable guy. He's obviously gonna be like, look, you can have the shit. You're a legitimate Stark. Whatever. Um, I don't think she deserves it, but I could see it happening. I'll say that for another video. Don't get offended. It's just my opinion. That's gonna be wrapping this video up here. Um, I have been Mark. This has been Sir Hunt's Reviews, and if you like what I do here at this channel, um, you can go check out my Patreon, I'll put a link down in the description. Basically, you can donate any amount of money, and what it does is, it allows me to purchase uh, better equipment to make higher quality videos, and it also allows me to take off a little bit of free time from work to be able to make these beautiful videos. Night of the Seven Kingdoms book giveaway is still going on, although it has changed a little bit. I uh, did a little bit of research, and I was just curious to see how much it would cost to, I don't know, say, send the book from here, where I am at, on the east coast of the United States of America, to somewhere like psh, 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 Canada, I don't know, um, UK mainly, because that's those are like my top countries uh, that watch. Um, it's like $100. That book was like 27 bucks after taxes um so what i'm gonna be doing is giving away a gift card to amazon and what you can do with that is the gift card will be for 25 bucks you can use that gift card to purchase the night of the seven kingdoms all you have to do to enter is like subscribe share this video with your friends and leave a comment down in the comment section so i know that you did so Competition ends on April 17th, so hopefully I will contact you, get your information, get you that card so that you could possibly have the book by the time the season starts. Um, I want to give a special shout out to Joe Swag, Lisa, and Ashley. You guys are amazing. Those are my first three Patreons. Um, I also want to thank my subscribers. I am almost at 1,000 subs, which is, yo, I will go super saiyan at 1,000 subs. Super motherfucking saiyan. Um, yeah. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure you click like, subscribe, share this video with your friends. This has been Sir Hunt's Reviews. Peace. Goodbye. Winter is coming. Good, because I'm pale as a motherfucker. <laughs> Say what's up, dude. Come on, show him your shirt. So, yeah, he